Right, this is Operation End Times. I'm your Jedi Warrior for Jesus. This is the Viking series, part nine, from Dan to Beersheba. You know, Dan, the city of Dan is up here, Beersheba is uh, down here, and that is the well of the sevenfold oath that Abraham made with a guy named Abimelech, who was a king or the son of the king. And uh, he said, Do unto me as I have done unto you, which sounds a lot like the golden rule. And, uh, you know, Abraham gave, gave him seven ewe lambs, which are seven daughters, seven women. And we know this because the same, the same language is used when uh, the prophet Nathan is talking to King David, and he tells him the parable where he said, there was a man that had one ewe lamb. That's all he had. And there was another man that had a whole bunch, a whole flocks and flocks and flocks. But this, this king, when he was looking for a ewe, decided to take the one ewe lamb of this one dude. And, you know, it enraged David where he said, oh, kill that king, you know, for doing such a wicked thing. And Nathan was like, that was you, aha! Because he took that man's wife, which was, once again, one of those shadow ma manifestations of marriage. And that's what we find again and again and again, is that marriage, you know, whether it was the oath that the fallen sons of God took or the wedding oaths that we take today. Marriage has this huge potential to take you on a shadow path, man, because you're just doing things for the wrong reasons. You're building a house, you know, the two. And you're getting married, and you're the king, the lord, and you're now in do do dominion over your wife, you know, subjugating your wife. You know, that sounds glorious. No, that's a shadow path, my friends. And that's why we find, you know, throughout the history is women are kind of covered up. Even though if you look hard enough, there is that glory path. And what you find is divine seed lines of queen bees and princesses like Abraham's wife, Sarah. Her name means princess. And, you know, these daughters of men that were fair, that are lit up with the spirit, you know, time and time again, these men who are fair or lit up with the spirit are hooking up like Abraham it was a was a lord or a man walking in the spirit but he hooked up with Sarah his princess and uh, you know that's kind of his story is as he traveled from uh, Babylon out of land of Ur down to over into here you know he was telling people that Sarah was his sister because he didn't want people to take his wife from him you know and Abimelech was one of these guys he didn't deal with fairly. And that's who he made the sevenfold oath from Beersheba to Dan. And, you know, when it talks about the people being of one mind, it says from Dan to Beersheba, they were of one accord, you know. But, uh, you know, it's kind of an elitism, you know, the chosen, the 144, the 12 tribes, you know, whatever. Uh, Sarah, you know, this queen bee, one of the, the markings is they're usually barren, you know, and then it's by the grace of God, by the Lord, they are given childbirth way late in their, their lives. So Sarah was like 90 years old when she conceived a child. But in the meantime, you know, she had her concubine, a bondswoman, uh, get to know Abraham, and she had a son born through her concubine. Hagar, and she ended up giving her the boot, even because she was mocking her, but it doesn't even matter. You know, Sarah should have been the bigger, better person, but, you know, that's the whole thing with these bonds women, and women in general, you know, throughout the Bible, is they're just misused, and, and time and time again. Now, in the book of Judges, starting around, oh, chapter 17, 18, 19 through 21, it's talking about a time where there was no king, where men just did whatever they thought was right in their minds, and what you'll see is they're doing all this super dark, evil, wicked stuff with women, you know, beating women down. And there, there's a story of a, uh, a guy from Judah who was a Levite, who was uh, hanging out around Mount Ephraim, and he had a concubine, and ultimately, uh, he tossed her out and she got raped and pillaged and died at his doorstep and then he ended up cutting her up and sending pieces of her to all the 12 tribes saying you're all responsible for this and then this huge uh, war broke out where from Dan to Beersheba they decided they attacked Benjamin and they basically wiped out Benjamin to the point where they were just about to make Benjamin the tribe of Benjamin extinct and yet this old mind frame, this old age, which is ending because we're going into a new age. The old age was the age of the mighty man, the male testosterone, the male driven ego, the king who was either building a house or a pyramid without God. The mighty man 
is Dan. And Dan is not so much a race as just anybody who chose, chooses the path of the mighty man. And you'll find out that's why Dan is not mentioned in Revelations, because there was nobody from Dan. You know, it's, it's a tribe that gets cut off. But uh, Dan, you know, there was a, an army of 600 mighty men from Dan. Dan, for some reason, wasn't allocated their land, so they decided to go attack up here, this city Laish, which means the lion, and it became the city of Dan, and it's all right at the base of Mount Hermon, which is called... Herman Baal. But Dan is the story of these guys. Ultimately, when they come across Mount Ephraim, there's a guy living uh, Ephraim, there's a guy living up there called Micah, which means one who is like God. And he had made himself a temple. And this was right as the Ten Commandments were up here instead of being in Jerusalem. But this guy Micah, you know, he made a priest out of one of these uh, sons of Judah. So he, he could have, I guess they were, he saw them building the temple in Jerusalem, and he was like, I'll build me my own temple. But Dan, when they were thinking about attacking up here, they came to this guy's temple, and they asked the dude, the Levite from Judah, they said, go talk to God and ask if it, what we're doing is okay. And whoever this Levite dude was talking to, the Lord came back and said, oh yeah, it's all good. Go ahead and kill these people up here. And, you know, Dan, even Dan describes these people as not well defended, kind of lackadaisical, uh, not really given a, a, a crap, you know. So that became the city of Dan. And that's where the, the golden calf was. And that's where, I believe, another idol. And they also, they were not only worshipping the calf, they were worshipping the mother goddess, Ashima. And that was because that's what all these people up here were worshipping, you know. And Dan kind of, through marriage and, and whatnot, mingling, took on the, the false gods of the people that were around them. So that's part of the shadow path of the tribe of Dan, is just them falling away. But, you know, they're not much different than any other tribe, you know. Like, like when you look at Jacob's sons, you know, his first six sons by Leah, you know, uh, Reuben, Levi, you know, I, I, I don't even need to name them, but the first six sons, those guys all did super wicked, evil stuff, both to women, killing people, you know, just, you know, so if people were going to be cut off just for being wicked, everybody would be cut off. Now, Dan symbolizes the mighty man, the ego, the pride. And that's why Dan gets cut off, because it's spiritual. Dan is the serpent. Spiritual. You know, you can't keep thinking 3D carnal. You know, Dan is not actually a snake wiggling on the ground. It means that Dan spiritually represents the mighty man walking in the shadow without God. That gets cut off. Now, the other tribe that gets cut off is Ephraim. And Ephraim, that's where this... Uh, Micah dude who is like God but Ephraim is also Egypt and that's the pyramid and that's also the uh, that's the, the worship of the, the goddess mother Ishtar you know, but it was also the Babylonians, and uh, that's another shadow distortion because it's instead of saying our father it's starting to say mother goddess mother, and you know what God is neither male nor female, and, you know, the Holy Spirit is kind of the feminine aspect of God, but, you know, when I'm communicating, I do say, hey, bless the Holy Spirit, uh, you know, bless wisdom and everything she gives us, you know, and women in the heavens are not some beat down, uh, put into bondage, like, in the heavenly realms, like, oh yeah, all the males, you know, God, the angels, they just beat down and step on women, however they are manifested in heaven. You couldn't be farther from the truth, my friends, because, you know, that's that's the other secret you see. Out of all this shadowiness of a man in a male-dominated society, it is women. You know, after you hear these horrific stories in Judges, you know, uh, 18, 19, 20, and 21, where women are just being called whores, all the daughters of any city are wicked, evil daughters, but what comes out of it is the daughters of Dan, which are lit up with the Spirit of God, and there's wise and great women, and they're all coming out of the tribes of Dan, the Shumanite women. And, and, you know, that's where you see the glory of Jesus, because he had his inner women, you know, Mary, the, the Marys, the women always knew what was going on spiritually. They could see the truth. Those, they were the ones that bowed down and worshipped the feet of Jesus Christ. And that's kind of what we see bursting forth out of here. Um, the other th light coming out of the shadowiness is Dan, the serpent, 
was in the spirit. Well, there was darkness to that spirit, you know, worshiping the, 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 the craven image of the mother goddess, worshiping the golden calf, you know, in whatever form it, it manifests. But they talk about the, the graven and the molten image that Dan worshiped that. But Dan also had a spirit of love. That was the light, the bright side. So all the uh, tribes and sons of Dan, if you look at it, all their names always mean my brother is help, my brother is mighty. It's a brotherhood. And the Vikings was a brotherhood. That's the tie-in. And Jesus was all about the brotherhood. So, one of the tie-ins we can see is like Numbers 35. Let me see if I can cue it up real quick. don't want to run out of time here. It's actually Numbers 3. But it's, it's the brotherhood. And this is just another spot of synchronicity I thought I would uh, point out. But Numbers 3.35 says, uh, And the chief of the house of the fathers of the family of Mer Merai and Zuriel and the sons of Abihail, these shall pitch on the side of the tab tabernacle that is northward. You know, north represents the Danes, the blondes, uh, the mighty men. You know, uh, but those names, Mary, I, Zuriel, Abraham, all mean like my brother is my helper. And uh, once again, 335, then you go from Numbers 335, you go to Mark 335, where Jesus says, if you follow me, you are my brother and my sister. So that's synchronicity, my friends, of the 335 between Numbers and Mark, talking about the brotherhood, which is a positive reflection of the kingdom of God that manifested even in the tribe of Dan. And that is the light out of the darkness because I'm not going to get into why there was this concentration, you know, but I will tell you it is a migration of these sons of God and part of their plan. So we'll get to the details of that. But out of the concentration of the blondness come the daughters of Dan, you know, which are kind of tied into the daughters of men that the fallen sons of God saw that were fair, you know, but it's lightness out of darkness and it doesn't matter whether you have blonde hair and blue eyes what it is is out of the male mankind it's womankind springing back forth it's the the seed line of eve which is a new man who can rule in mercy and love and compassion and instead of being a crueler which you know uh, who is king who is the cruelest rules you know because that's what's been happening since the beginning of time is the mighty man has risen up and it's manifested in dark ways. And likewise, even with Dan, when Dan rose up, they attacked a, a helpless city here. <sighs> so, anyway. Um, from Dan to Beersheba. Beersheba is a well that Abraham dug. He gave Abimelech seven ewes. And that all ties back into uh, the fallen sons of God and uh, Cain. You know, who uh, God said, I will avenge you sevenfold. And then Lamech, the powerful, which was seven times seventy. But it's the sevens, my friends. Seven, seven ewes, ewe lambs that Abraham gave him. And that those are the seven witnesses, you know, daughters of Dan that were given from Abraham over to this Abimelech dude. And, you know, the dark side is constantly, you know, both Dark and Light are trying to get these daughters of Dan, which are women that have vision, you know. Jacob's wife, uh, uh, Rachel, you know, she's the one that hid the, cra the craven image. So she was, her Laban had this uh, darker image, whatever that was, the mother goddess or the calf or whatever. But Rachel also knew about magical things like the mandrake root when she was trying to have a child. She was trying to use the drug on Jacob and she was swapping it out with uh, her sister Leah who was then getting uh, sex time with Jacob. And it was all this dark manifestation of marriage because Leah was just like, now he will love me because I'm bearing him more children. And it was just like children of iniquity because these first six sons, man, did all sorts of dark things, you know? And that's why, you know, it's not about any particular race, you know, being light or dark, you know? God manifests in any, each and every one of us, you know? But it, it still plays into what's unfolding here, because Dan 
is the hornet, the locust that is unleashed at the end, that is cut off. It's the mighty man, the rise of the mighty man. And you know what? There's probably going to be some blonde, blue-haired uh, uh, people involved, but the mighty man will come in every shape, size, and color, my friends, because it is more a state of mind and of your spirit, because you're trying to either fan the flames of your own spirit, or you got some dark spirit leading you forward on a path of doom and destruction. Because it is the humble path. You know, the path of God is always the humble path and the opposite of what you expect. All right, the Vikings, we will continue.